Uh, in this slide deck, I have a description about how to create trends, what the components of a trend are, uh, which I've been using for a number of years. Um, when we were talking about just now the critical uncertainties, the things that are high impact and, and critical because we don't know which way they're going to go, um, those become the basis for scenario planning where you think about what are the two most important um, drivers that are happening here that are most uncertain and of highest impact. And what you would do is you would create, you would take them into their polarities. For example, in our case, it was war, peace. That was, may not have been the best example, but, uh, but it was one that we used within Nokia, which was around um, ownership and control on one axis, and on the other axis was about um, the issues of uh, digital rights and NIP uh, as well. So what you would do is you would take those two most important things and you'd create four worlds essentially out of it and you would entertain what those four worlds look like. And then you would think about what does that mean for us? And you would develop strategies. If you have a strategy which is successful in all worlds, your group is probably not going to debate it very much. It's pretty easy to agree on it. If you have a strategy which is highly risky in two worlds but highly successful in two worlds, doesn't mean you don't take it. You take it with your eyes wide open. And what happened with Nokia, um, I was going to show you some slides from the work that I'd done with them on scenario planning with the group executive board and uh, the key decision makers in that organization, is we did this exercise with them and with that world map that I'd showed you. And when we looked at the strategies that we developed and we assessed them against the different worlds, I can, looking back now, I can see that the downfall was actually in the literature at the time where a number of the moves that Nokia had made were considered high risk because they were highly unsuccessful in certain of the worlds that we had developed. What we didn't do or what we failed to do was to keep scanning back to ask ourselves, is this other world emerging? And we were not agile enough to turn around fast enough. And the market had already been taken up by other entrants such as Apple and Android now, right? Um, so that inclusion of people into your value chain you know, making apps, co-creation, just, just understanding your user as a co-creator who can contribute to your own value was something that was sorely missed. Sometimes it's very difficult for organizations to change even if they see that they have to change because of the investments that have already happened into them. Um, so, and also if you've had success by having a bold move, which Nokia did, it was very bold. It just took all of its eggs, put it in one basket, and it was a success extremely risky. It's often hard for those organizations you might find if when your organization is mature, and maybe some of you have already hit this, once you have a great innovation and you've seen the future properly and you've responded in a way which is very successful, it might be difficult to do this again because you become risk adverse because of your success and the direction that you've headed in and because of the people that you've hired and the value proposition you've put out there. So doing this exercise repeatedly, annually, is important to keep the organization agile. And this kind of work that we did helps to keep all the minds moving and thinking. Um, there are a number of games I play as well with organizations just to keep, keep that freshness, keep the lateral thinking, keeping the ideation, and making sure that you're not moving into a tunnel, which is hard to repeal from. So that's it. Um, I will distribute those slides, and um, I'll stop talking and you can ask questions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.